Hi, welcome to an overview session on SAP Extended Warehouse Management. Today we are going to talk about SAP Extended Warehouse Management. We are going to give you an overview on the SAP Extended Warehouse Management module of SAP. We are going to discuss and review the course content of our training program. And we'll also talk about how the course is conducted how we take you through the concepts of SAP warehouse management and how we help you in learning this new model of SAP. Warehouse management. First of all, what is warehouse management and what are the key objectives that we look forward from our warehouse management system? A warehouse management system is a software which is designed to support and optimize the warehouse functionality and to support distribution center management. A warehouse management also is used to facilitate management by the warehouse supervisor in helping them in their day-to-day -day planning, organizing staff, directing them, controlling the resources, moving the parts in and out of the warehouse, and also keeping a track of the support staff how they are performing in executing the movements of products in and out of warehouse. Warehouse management system is basically a software which uh, warehouse users, they use it while carrying out the warehouse processes and also by warehouse supervisors who keep a track of how things are being carried out in a warehouse. What are the key objectives we should look from a warehouse management system? Higher customer service, main focus of a warehouse management system is given to customer service because the customers may come up with all kinds of requirements. A warehouse management system should be flexible enough, should have those capabilities to adhere to client needs and give them the products at the right time in the requirements that they have given us. Process standardization. Over the period of years, a lot of warehousing processes have become standardized due to the way they are being used across industries. EWM or any warehouse management system is look forward to adhering those standards. Increased efficiency and productivity. A warehouse management system is no longer a system just used to manage the products, give the information of inventory. It is now used to help the business optimize their processes, help them in efficiently performing their operations, and help them with increasing their productivity in the way they perform their warehousing processes. Reduce inventory and labor cost. Modern warehouses have become smaller, faster, flexible. The expectations from modern warehouses are that they should keep the right amount of inventory, not too much, not too less. Any warehouse you take, it overflows after some time. So the spaces have reduced the inventory is going down. We have to manage with minimum inventory so that it's less asset in hand for the company. It should not be showing as a big value on their uh, balance sheet. So companies look forward to having a optimized inventory for their warehouses. We're also looking forward to have uh, labor cost reduced. So the benefits that they get from uh, reducing the labor cost, they can pass it on to their product and they can be more competitive in their markets. Greater visibility and decision support. Warehouse management system should help them in giving a in-depth analysis of stock and how the warehouse operation is being performed so that effective decisions can be made while the processes are being carried out and also if any change in process is required or this should also help them in implementing new decisions in their companies. Process automation scalability. So new warehouses have all sorts of automated equipments. You have forklifts, you have conveyors, you have cranes, you have robotic arms, you have automatic storage utility systems. So all kind of automations are coming up the warehouse management system should be able to automate a lot of warehouse processes for you. Plus, those should be scalable. Those interface with your hardware should require less maintenance. And 
flexibility to order processes. What we look forward from our warehouse management system is then ability to be flexible in processing the orders. The warehouse management system should be capable of providing the flexibility to the companies so that they can implement their own processes when it comes to receiving the stock and when it comes to delivering the stock. No two warehouse, you know, they may follow the same process depending on the physical nature of storage products. There can be some process requirement from the request point of view from where we are getting a request to process orders. They may have some requirements on how processes should be carried out. A warehouse management system should be flexible to adopt those processes as well as take into consideration whatever product specific and storage specific requirements we have in terms of processing orders. Improved space utilization using our warehouse management system, it should help us to utilize our space as much as possible and help us deliver our request in an optimized manner. SAP EWM and its deployment options. SAP EWM is a warehouse product from SAP which is used to manage high volume warehouse operations. It is used to integrate complex supply chain, logistic and warehousing distribution processes. We are providing us with ultimate visibility and controlling of warehouse processes. It not only stores your stock, it also helps you in optimizing your inventory tracking, help you with cross docking operations, distribution operations, multi-channel fulfillment in real time. The reason why SAP has brought in EWM where it also had a warehouse management solution due to high data volume, better performance and flexibility requirement, there was a need to make a new architecture. Moreover, with the experiences we had for bigger complex warehouses, there was a need to have a warehousing solution for decentralized warehouse where all other modules are in a in one system and SAP EWM is in another system. We call it as a decentralized warehouse management system. So most of this bigger warehouse, complex warehouses, they use this decentralized warehousing concept. The requirement was that these warehouses should work 24 by 7. So to ensure the system is available 24 by 7, even when you know the ERP system, they may be down, this EWM system should be working. So for those kind of requirement, SAP thought of bringing up a new solution in a decentralized space. Also, SAP wanted to change the basic concept of SAP WM where transfer orders were used to ensure that the new functionality gives them more flexibility. There was a risk in changing the existing architecture of mature application WM, which was used by thousands of live customers. So that was also a reason SAP did not change WM and brought in a new product, SAP EWM. With SAP EWM, SAP is also looking forward to changing the mindset of warehousing from just managing the stock to controlling the processes and help them achieve those objectives that we have discussed in our last slide. So let us quickly go through the deployment options that we have in with SAP EWM as of now. SAP EWM standalone. In this deployment option, SAP EWM is installed in, as a separate module in our NetWeaver or it is installed as part of SCM. It is decentralized in a separate instance and it talks to one or more ERP systems. These ERP systems are your ECC system, where all MM, SDPP, QM, all those modules are being used and the EWM talks to those systems using queued RFCs. You can suggest one of these deployment for your customers while you're implementing SAP EWM or you are already working on SAP Extended Warehouse Management. So you may be working on either of these deployment options. In classic ACC, we have another deployment option where SAP ERP can be connected to one or more EWM standalone systems. Company which is based out of Chicago, they have a warehouse in Chicago. The same plant has another warehouse in Germany. So these can be two separate EWM systems in two different countries. So one more reason for having a decentralized warehouse is the decentralized warehouse can have their own servers closer to the warehouse. Most of the RF processes are done on handheld device scanner. We need faster response from server. Also EWM generates huge data. So by having a decentralized warehouse, 
the bigger warehouses that they generate huge data they are they need flexibility they need faster response from server generally we have a server closer to the warehouse so we will have a server in this case one server in chicago and another server in germany let's now talk about the uh, deployment options that we have in s4 hana in s4 hana we have both options embedded option as well as decentralized one thing is you can have your erp modules like mmpp sg qm all those modules can be part of s4 hana and you can continue to use ewm as part of decentralized scm based or installed separately in net viewer that kind of warehouse you call it as a standalone warehouse you can still continue to use ewm as a standalone warehouse it can talk to one or more s4 hana system same way as uh, we discussed one erp system can have one or more awm decentralized system depending on the number of warehouses the erp system needs so those those more than one decentralized warehouses can be also connected to a s4 hana erp system we have another deployment option where sap erp and sap ewm both can be part of one instance with this kind of deployment we call it as a embedded ewm in the embedded ewm in the same s4 hana system we will have all the erp modules as well as we'll have ewm system in the same instance the benefit is to, we don't need maintenance of two separate servers in s4 hana the processing is fast with this deployment option sap is also trying to suggest this solution for smaller and medium warehouses also where it, traditionally we were using sap wm module finally depending on a company you can have a mix of all types of uh, deployment options in a in a company you can see it's in s4 hana for some warehouse it can use an embedded version some warehouse it can use the decentralized s4 hana ewm system for some warehouse it can connect to sap ewm standalone so you can also connect to all types of warehouses through a erp system in s4 hana necessity to move to ewm why there is a need to move to ewm sap future vision is to continue and expand sap ewm as warehouse management solution with more capabilities and refinement sap still support ecc wm implementation it has higher maintenance cost but as of now there are no enhancements being made in a comprehensive wm system so p is not bringing in new changes new functionalities in the sap wm module SAP EWM is used across industries. Through S4 HANA in the model company, SAP has added SAP EWM as a warehousing solution and they have proposed for all the model company solutions they have for various industries. SAP enables warehousing activities to be executed seamlessly with inbuilt best practices. Catch weight management, cross docking, validated service, all these solutions can be executed seamlessly through the best practice experience that sap has implementing warehouse management in various industries sap wm also gives the capability to handle large volume of transaction in a faster manner as it is required for consumer product industries so in this new architecture sap has an object oriented programming which will dynamically calculate your variables and this is a new programming to uh, the way we do it in normal erp modules this kind of programming is used to give more flexibility in designing your own process so it's a new dimension module and a lot of new functionalities you will see in sap ewm as a market leader in business systems sap brings continuous enhancement with sap ewm with cutting edge technology to help businesses grow faster some of these examples of new cutting edge technologies which sap has delivered with ewm directly connecting to mfs system there is no need of a middleware sap also have el- eliminated middleware in their voice picking so you can see a lot of developments coming up in in ewm side where sap is looking forward to bring a world class solution in the warehousing space sap ewm running on s4 hana is also going to speed up the processing transaction it is going to help you in huge data handling and you it will help you in capabilities of predictive analytics as well so these are the current necessities which are driving the companies to move to sap ewm evolution of sap ewm
So what you can see on your screen is how the functionalities have evolved in SAP EWM over the period of years. It started in 2006 with EWM 5 version. Then we had 7, 7.1, 2. I would say 9 was a major breakthrough with SAP EWM. Prior to 9, we used to install SAP EWM as a add-on in the SCM system with APO and other modules. But after EWM 9 version, EWM became a lot more stable. SAP recommended after 9 version to have EWM separate instance. It was, there was no need to share the same system with APO and SNC, SNP systems. Some of the important functionalities that have been delivered by SAP are bringing up shipping cockpit, direct integration with transportation management, dock appointment scheduling where you can schedule appointments for your truck and trailer onto your doors. Cartonization planning helps you in planning your outbound load into a truck or a trailer. Advanced production integration where you are now able to integrate production processes to EWM. You can replicate your production orders to EWM as production material requests and all your staging, good receipt, all activities can take place in EWM. Important functionalities like um, MFS continuously, it has been improvised and new features are being provided. Pick by voice, warehouse billing, pick by cart, labor management, slotting, cross docking, wave management, transit warehousing, commerce returns are some of the other functionalities which have added into the extended warehouse management while SAP EWM was being evolved over these period of years. Capability comparison of SAP WM with SAP EWM. Here you can see some of the functionalities you have in WM. You also have them in EWM, but the way they are executed in EWM are totally different. For example, handling rate management in WM and how we do it in EWM is totally different. EWM is a lot more stable. We don't get inconsistency issues. It is easy to work with handling units, multi-level mixed handling units easy to pack, unpack, and we don't use storage unit management of WM. RF technology we had in WM, it's there in EWM, but the way we do it is totally different. We also have replenishment, placement strategies, removal strategies. The main aim of having warehousing system is to have bin management and manage soil location stock in a warehousing system. Those features are also there in EWM. Features like placement strategy, removal strategies, replenishment, they are same, but the way we do it in EWM, it's totally different. So that's why, you know, even if you are from a WM space, you still have to go through these concepts in EWM. Functional understanding of this warehousing processes will help you, but you will still have to, you still have to see how it works in SAP EWM. Important functionalities, which we find in EWM, yard management, Standard, standard out of the box, we have it in EWM. Easy to activate, deactivate, yard management, RF framework, advanced configurable RF, which helps us to make our own RF screens, customize our process, warehouse specific for executing our RF transactions. It is very flexible. We, any requirement can be easily added to the standard framework by plugging in at various connection points provided by SAP. Task and resource management. SAP has a functionality standard in EWM where you can manage not only your uh, stock, but also your resources that are handling the stock, like how many pallets a resource can pick, what are its capabilities. You can also track which resource is doing what activity in the warehouse. Warehouse management goes to a next level in handling your resources as well. Cartonization planning. Planning takes place in calculating your load in terms of delivery to a customer in managing your load for a truck or trailer. Value added service and kitting. Kits can be prepared. Value added services, standard out of the box. You can activate this functionality where you can track labeling, cleaning activities that you do. You can calculate the time required, resources required. You can give instructions while these activities are being carried on. You can prepare kits for your warehouse or for your customer. Unloading, loading of transportation unit is a simple requirement which we didn't have in WM, but now we are able to load, unload transportation unit. It's a very essential requirement for most of the warehouses where the pallets, when they come in the warehouse, they, we need to unload them 
Similarly, when the pallets are going out, we need to load them on a truck. With EWM, you can load them, you can track which handling units are on a truck, which handling units are on here in the yards. All those information is transparent and you can track your stock across your premises. The consultation, if you get mixed pallets, you can take it to the consultation area. It can do a repacking there and then you finally place it into uh, different storages. Slotting and rearrangement, it helps you to identify and optimize storage for your product and helps you to rearrange your stock so that they are placed in an optimized manner. Labor management to manage your warehouse users. It also integrates with HR where you can make decisions on their wages and they can track their performance using several reports in labor management. Cross docking helps you in the overall supply chain, helps you in being more efficient in your logistic planning across your supply chain. Warehouse billing, stock appointment scheduling, exception handling, flexible and comprehensive monitoring tools are some other important features of EWM. The EWM system is always designed to carry out all activities on the RF devices. We don't do the activities on the desktop. All activities are done on the RF. So any exceptions to the system suggested way of doing the process gets recorded as exception in the system. You can trigger alerts, email. You can see those alerts in the monitor and you can make decisions for changing a process. Those alerts can also be used as a KPI metrics for your warehouse. Warehouse monitors, CDS views, cockpit provided by SAP to help you when we are monitoring in SAP EWM. They are more comprehensive, have more detailed analytics possibilities, and they are flexible as well. Let's go through an inbound process and talk about how inbound could be done when we are doing it in I managed warehouse, how we do it in a W managed warehouse and how we would do the same process for a simple EWM managed warehouse and how we would do the same process for a complex EWM managed warehouse. Warehouses I manage the store location, basically we don't assign it to warehouse. We only track the stock at store location level. We do good receipt, the stock at store location increases. We see the stock in the store location. It's like your warehouse premises, the stock is there in the warehouse, but we don't know at which bin it exists. So that's the inventory management. We just know how much stock we are holding. In terms of using WM or EWM, we will now go in, see the stock at bin level and see where, where in the warehouse they are stored. So in your warehouse premises, they are stored in a particular location. We will be able to track that location also. For an inbound process, SAP WM, we first create purchase orders. We post the goods receipt of the purchase order using MeGo transaction. A material document gets posted. This material document will increase your stock at your store location level and your accounting documents are created. You can trigger vendor payment based on the payment terms. This brings the stock in the interim bin, like your interim areas from where you will be taking it to an actual area in the warehouse for storing them. WM, we use transaction LTO6 to create a transfer order. This is a document required to track the movement of your products within a warehouse. So in WM, we use transfer orders, which after carrying out the movement, will confirm the transfer orders. The warehouse stock is seen in the final bin, and that way we complete our process. And this is how our inbound process is done in WM. To help you understand the difference with EWM, let us see how we do the same process with EWM. We create a purchase order. We create inbound delivery using VL31N transaction. This inbound delivery is also a vendor ASN where vendor has sent us a shipping notification once they have dispatched the product from their end. This is a mandatory document for receiving products in EWM. This inbound delivery will then get replicated to EWM. In EWM, using the inbound delivery, we are going to post a good receipt. Then a material document gets created. Here, good receipt posting is done in EWM which will trigger a good receipt posting on the ERP side. And similarly, a material document gets created. We use warehouse tasks in EWM. So we don't use transfer orders. We use warehouse tasks to do movements in EWM. We'll confirm the warehouse tasks and the stock is available in the final warehouse bin. So this is how we would do an inbound process in a simple EWM managed warehouse. Let us now talk about how similar inbound process can be carried out in a complex inbound process. We will create a purchase order. 
using the purchase order we would create a inbound delivery the inbound delivery we will assign it to a transportation unit this transportation unit can be created in integration with transportation management or using shipments or using some interface with your third party logistic vendors who have planned the shipment for you it represents your truck load or a trailer which is going to pick one or more delivery stock from your warehouse we move the tube to the door we perform unload and the gr is posted in ewm full load truck comes from the vendor we check it at the gate we take it at the door at the door we are going to unload the handling units we can unload the handling units one at a time or we can unload the whole delivery at once once you unload and do the good receipt a material document gets posted this material document will then get replicated to your erp system after unloading we have stock in staging area from staging area we can directly put it away in the final bin or we can do the same process via some intermediate steps we can take it to a deconsolidation area we can take it to a quality area so here for example we take it to a deconsolidation workstation let's say we got mixed pallets and we want to unpack into homogeneous pallets before we place them into the warehouse so we'll confirm the task and move the stock to a deconsolidation workstation in the workstation we'll perform our unpacking and complete our deconsolidation after deconsolidation we will then move the stock to a identification point where the products are going to be identified before we place them into the final bin and then we execute and confirm the task to put it into the final bin from the identification point all these processes the tasks are created automatically and we confirm them using the rf guns so finally warehouse task is created from the deconsolidation to id point and from identification point a task is created to place it into the final bin we confirm these tasks and the stock comes into the final warehouse bin this is how we execute a complex inbound process in ewm what you can see on your screen now is our course content we will be first take going through the system integration and sift understanding the various organizational units for integrating ewm with erp how to integrate the settings involved in integrating the warehouse how apo core interface works we are going to then talk about the warehouse structure and the master data involved in executing the ewm processes structure elements like storage types sections activity areas and we'll cover all the master data as well in unit 2 unit 3 we'll talk about all the monitoring tools that we have in ewm and we'll also talk about how transactions are carried out on rf using rf framework while doing that we'll understand how the resource and queue management is carried out and how we do configurations for rf in ewm under unit 3 we will complete our setup of our warehouse then from unit 4 we'll start executing the warehousing processes we are going to implement a case study warehouse while we are understanding the concepts so we'll create a warehouse together create a new plant store location assigning it to company code we will create our own structure elements in the warehouse so this is going to be a template warehouse where we are going to go through a case study of a pump manufacturing these are all the components of our finished product form which we are going to manufacture we are going to receive the raw material supply them to production receive the finished goods from production and deliver it to our customer so we are going to go through all the processes using this case study warehouse this is an example of a demo sheet of all the data that we are going to prepare right from store location warehouse shipping point sales organization sales area plants and all the supporting data that we need for executing processes in ewm so after setting up all the data for our warehouse our template warehouse our case study project we will start executing the processes we will start first with good receipt process we will carry out inbound processing using ewm we will talk about the quality integration of sap ewm expected good receipt scenario how we do slotting and rearrangement we we'll also understand availability group how we set up those to connect ewm with inventory management and finally we'll talk about all the strategies that we have in the inbound process followed by inbound process we will go through outbound process as well similarly on outbound process we are going to see how outbound deliveries are created how we carry out way management we understand outbound strategies 
outbound deliveries, how they can be directly created in UWM. We will go through the exception handling process, how big denial works in outbound, how do we integrate outbound with batch management, and we'll also talk about how advanced production integration works with EWM, how we supply parts for production orders, and how are we going to receive the finished products. So these are going to be our basic inbound and outbound process. Then we are going to implement complex processes for our warehouse. First, by activating yard management, we will integrate our warehouse to yard, and then the same inbound process, outbound process, we are going to carry out using yard management. We are going to create our own deliveries, map those deliveries to a new document types in EWM. We'll understand how the deliveries are integrated in extended warehouse management. We are going to discuss how the uh, warehouse order creation rule works. It is used to prepare a work package based on the resource capacity. Warehouse order creation rule, we are going to prepare and optimize work package for the resources to execute the process. We are going to understand EWM using this process execution in our case study warehouse. And finally, we are going to implement storage control where using process and layout storage control, we are going to amend our inbound process to carry out various intermediate steps like deconsolidation and quality for inbound, staging and packing for outbound and loading and loading as well. Thereafter, we are going to talk about all the internal warehouse processes like posting changes, stock transfer, ad hoc movements, replenishment. We are going to also talk about physical inventory process, the different procedures, documents, how we handle differences, and what are the reporting tools in physical inventory. Finally, we'll talk about the cross topics of EWM, like labor management, how PPFs are used for automating them, like printing of labels, automatically doing posting good receipts, goods issues in background, and many more things. About how value-added services are implemented, how do we carry out kitting in EWM, cross-talking, and how do we carry out process integrated with a material flow system. For all these units, we are going to follow an approach where, for example, we are going through goods issue process. We will first go through the objectives of our session. Then we'll go through the concepts, understand how the urban process works you through screenshots, through slides. We are going to understand the whole concept. Then we are going to execute the scenarios and system. And we will also mention all the transaction and steps, how we carried out our scenario in system. Finally, we'll wrap up the session and we'll continue doing that for all our topics. Some of the topics, whatever demonstration we do, we will also share with you the Word document, which has all the steps of whatever configuration and master data we did to execute the process. Finally, we'll cover all the and topics for the units. And at the end of each unit, we'll summarize our learning from that unit, followed by an assessment and evaluation for the concepts that we understood in that unit. We will give you a lot of assignments. Which you will have to do it in your case study warehouse. We do these processes in the training for a case study warehouse. In parallel, we expect you to create your own warehouse, integrate it to the master data, and follow the processes with me. And at the end of each unit, I will be giving you a lot of assignments to carry out for that particular unit, like testing an exception code or how to create a batch managed product. For each unit, we'll also share with you question answers to help you evaluate yourself on the understanding of the concepts that you have learned in that unit. Our course is very close to SAP certification course content. So if you are planning to appear for SAP certification, this course is going to help you. So this is all about how the course is going to be conducted. Similar documents, similar slides you'll find for all the topics that we are going to cover. Just to give you an example on how we are going to how we are going to demonstrate our topics. For example, we are covering wave management. So first we are going to cover all the configurations involved in wave management. We are going to understand the master data and how to test the particular concept that we have just understood. So similar word documents will be shared with you for all your demonstration topics. Common question that people ask while enrolling the course is, if you don't have WM experience still, is this course valid for you? Even if you do not have WM experience, still you can go through the course. This course, we are going to understand the concepts from 
start we are going to go with the basics and slowly we are going to make the scenarios more complicated you still have to go through even if you have dublin background because the way the configurations are done the scenarios are executed in ewm are totally different to how you do it in wm for people who don't have dublin background it's fine we will go through from start and we'll help you understand the concepts so this is going to be our interactive course do send me your questions your scenario let's discuss and i'll try my best to help you out in starting your journey in sap ewm the whole idea behind this course is to to give you a practical understanding of how ewm is implemented in various companies so we are going to share our practical knowledge plus we are also going to help you in understanding how the standard processes are carried out in sap ewm thank you